new videos every day. Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mira Hoffman and I'm with Houston Chair Massage. In this video, we're going to be going over some great techniques for back pain and just a nice general routine for you to use in your chair massage practice or on a friend. So stay tuned and we'll have some great techniques to share with you. So we'll begin just by warming up the neck and shoulders. You can place both palms on either sides of the shoulders and at the base of the neck or the top of the shoulders. And I'm just going to begin by gently and alternatingly applying pressure to the tops of the shoulders here. I'm just really feeling the musculature underneath your hands. You can use kind of a medium pressure here as you just get warmed up. And try not to catch any hair underneath your hands. And then we can work out towards the edge of the shoulders as well. Just keeping nice soft palms here. And we can pause for a nice stretch here on the back of the neck. And then moving back in towards the midline. I'm going to start walking down the back. So transitioning to the side of your partner or client. Walking the palms down on either side of the spine along the rectors, which are the muscles that help support and hold the back up straight. And once you come down to the bottom, you can just pause and step around. So now that you've stepped around, just kind of placing your hands on the sacrum and just applying a gentle downwards pressure here, and decompressing the lower spine. And then we'll walk the hands back up, again staying on either side of the vertebrae. So not working directly onto the bone, but staying on that more muscly part of the erectors. Changing the angle of your hands will come all the way up to the top of the shoulders again. And then kneading into the shoulder muscles, we have the traps and the levator scapula. And then kneading a little bit into the neck, just with our fingertips, to give a nice sense of completeness and continuity to this warming of the back. You can do a little bit of circles here, again, just staying into that muscular area, avoiding any bony areas. And just kind of scooping upwards on those shoulder muscles. And then we'll transition to using some loose fists, so keeping your palms open. I'm using the backs of my fingers to apply pressure to those same areas we just worked. So it feels really nice to make a few passes on each of the muscle bodies. And with each pass, you'll notice that the muscles are starting to warm up and loosen. And they're starting to relax and unwind. And because of that, you're able to work a little bit deeper. I'm just staying conscious of the receiver's body. If it seems like they're tensing up, then maybe working a little bit lighter or checking in with them to see if there's anything that you can do. 
So when we reach down into the low back area, you'll kind of come up to the hips. So you definitely want to avoid any bony landmarks and not apply any direct pressure there. So I'm working right above the hips here and outlining them there for you to see. And then working our way back up again, nice and slow. do this a couple more passes just to really get familiarized with Courtney's back here noticing and observing any areas and along the back that may feel more tight and just making a note of that to come back to and spend a little bit more time on And gently beginning our second round here with the fists. So I wanted to ask you, because I know it's been a controversial and hot topic in my Facebook feed recently, what y'all's stance is on vaccination. So leave us a comment and let us know what, what you feel is right what you think people should do, if everyone should be vaccinated, if that includes the flu vaccine or not, and why. I really want to know what your thoughts are on this. So I'm adding a little bit of movement here to the fist on the erectors. So I'm doing some little circles outwards. By gently placing my hands down and then rotating and you'll notice when I was working over the shirt I had a little bit more fluidity less traction so it's a little bit easier motion so definitely trying to avoid pulling on the skin if you notice that the skin seems to be dragging you can either reduce your pressure a little bit or just stay with that static walking movement. And then we're walking all the way up the neck with our fingertips now. And then slowly coming back down. Going into that third pass with the fist. So the slower that you work, the more relaxing this is going to feel to your receiver. And the faster, quicker that you apply these techniques, the more rejuvenating and invigorating it's going to feel. So depending on where they're at and what kind of session they want, you may want to adjust the rhythm and speed with which you give these techniques. So again, placing and rotating the fists out. Adds just a little bit of a dynamicness to the move. You can feel it starts to traction the muscles in a different way, getting them to lengthen. And then when we reach the base of the neck, moving into our fingertip walking, staying on that nice meaty part of the neck muscles. And working all the way up to the base of the skull. And come back down. And I'm going to transition to the side 
We're going to really target one set of erectors. So your erectors are kind of running on either side of the spine, helping hold it up. So we're going to melt into each set of erectors gently with the fingertips. So I start by placing my fingers about an inch or so away from the spine and just applying sort of a downward pressure. And once I've kind of placed my fingers and completed that downward pressure step, I'm going to slowly shift the direction of my pressure towards the spine a little bit. And slowly melting in. And lifting the fingers and repositioning them about a half an inch down. Just making nice small steps. So fingertips down into the body. And then a gentle angle direction towards the spine. And if you're not as familiar with body work and you're not sure if your positioning is right, you're always welcome to check in with your receiver, ask them how it feels. And you can also do a little bit of exploration. So the erectors will kind of want to pop. It's like a wiry rope. So you can see right now my fingers are sort of popping back and forth. So you're welcome to do that if that feels good to your receiver. Or you can continue with just trying to melt into that outer border of the muscle. So I'm pausing for about a breath at each spot. to the lower part of the back. The erectors are joined by some other muscles. Most prominently your QL or quadratus lumborum. So if I were to keep on going on a path sort of out towards the hip, that would be focusing on QL. If I keep on on a track downwards, parallel to the spine, we'll stay on the erectors. So I'm going to work on just the erectors for this pass. may start to get sensitive for people if they have any concerns with their low back, any low back pain or discomfort. So just check in with your receiver and make sure that the pressure still feels good. Maybe they want a little bit more pressure. Just making any adjustments as needed. I'm starting to retrace my steps a little bit. I'm coming back to that QL juncture point. So coming up to the top of that connection area. This time I'm going to make a little pass out towards the side, trying to target QL. So with all this fingertip melting, we're applying pressure into the muscle belly or perpendicular to it. So I kind of think about it like a rubber band. We are trying to stretch across it. help relax these muscles and get them to release and unwind. The 
low back can also be somewhat ticklish. So just making sure that if this pressure does not feel good or it's triggering kind of a ticklish tensing response, you have a couple options for modification. We can come and go back to our loose fist now that you kind of know where that muscle is. And I'm only using kind of the first finger and a little bit of the middle finger, finger here. So same idea, just picking up the slack in that muscle and applying a downward pressure kind of in and down. So that was option one. And option two would actually to become down further. And we're just going to use sort of this outer part of your forearm and pick up that muscle and apply again sort of a downward, inward angle to our approach. You can see I'm supporting the other side with my free hand. It just helps stabilize the hips a little bit and the back. So with this last variation using your forearm, I definitely would recommend really making sure that you're familiar with your receiver's body. This can be quite a bit of pressure. And if you're unfamiliar with the underlying architecture of the body, you just want to note that there's some bony landmarks, the ribs and the hips, which you want to avoid. So not a lot of flexibility there. If you do decide to use your forearm, it's a little bit of a broader surface. So I'm coming back out of this area by just giving some nice rolling along the rectors with my palm, I'm just kind of warming them up, loosening them up, and saying goodbye. You can roll all the way out the tops of the shoulders. And now we're started back up from the top again. So at this point, I would transition to the other side and repeat those same moves. So fingertip melting along the erectors, working into the QL, and then doing some nice palm circles up the back. So, we talked a little bit about levator scapula, but I wanted to do some very specific work into it because it can be very tight on a lot of people. So right now I'm just opening up that area by using my palms and sort of the heel of my hand. I'm just pressing downwards into that muscle. And just like we did before with some fingertip melting, I'm just going to place my thumbs on that muscle belly and allow them to sink in. scapula runs from the edge of the shoulder up into the neck and just like our rubber bands we kind of want to scoop into that muscle belly I'm doing a nice perpendicular pressure approach to really cultivate some good changes here So on some people, their levator scapula is so locked up 
that it will feel as if you're working into bone, just barely softer than it. So a good way to test if you're in the right spot. So you can have your client shrug their shoulders. Yeah, that's perfect. Even just a little bit and you'll see that the muscle starts to bunch up underneath your hands or thumbs and helps verify that you're not on a bone. So, probably saw my thumb jump there. That's a little bit of a knot that we were rolling over. Knots are the very technical term for just fascia that helps bundle up around the muscles to splint and support them when they're being overworked. And you can just do some gentle movement back and forth on those tight areas. to help get the fascia to release and those muscle fibers to realign. I'm just working nice and slow and gently. Some people really enjoy having this pressure and intensity of work done. And for others, it may be too much. So receivers always feel free to communicate if something feels uncomfortable or not good. And we'll come around to the side with all of our fingertips. Just making some nice circles off the top of the shoulder, focusing in on that levator scap. And we can even do the same thing from the other direction. So before we were kind of working from the top down. And now we're going to work from the bottom up. So placing the fingers and kind of pressing downwards. And then rolling upwards. So a little micro movement downwards towards the edge of the shoulder blade. As I rock out, I come down a little bit. And then reposition. And making some thumb circles again. Just loosening that area up. So the last part that I wanted to show you, the last technique, was kind of working into the lower back and glutes a little bit in the chair. And I definitely recommend if people have low back pain, that is a really good technique to use for them. But you may also find that people are sensitive so I always just check before I work this area, especially at the start of a session. You know, is it okay if I work a little bit of pressure into the top of the glutes? Most people will say yes, because it feels really good. So we kind of walked our hands back down the spine. And now I'm just doing that loose fist again, pressure into the glutes, so underneath the hip bone here. 
and avoiding applying any pressure directly onto the bones. And just like we did with the fist before, you can do a little bit of rolling outwards. And that helps traction the muscle in a different direction and can feel really good. So coming back up to the top as we begin to close out the session for today. with both hands open and just making a conscious and clear conclusion to the session before bringing your hands up and off the body so thank you so much for joining us I hope you got some wonderful techniques out of this video again my name is Mira Hoffman and I'm with Houston Chair Massage you can find out more about me and my practice at HoustonChairMassage.com and make sure to favorite this video so you can come back to it and watch it again. And give us a thumbs up if you liked what we shared. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.